It's time for New Wellness TV with Dr. Lee. Join your host, the accomplished Dr. Sherilyn Lee, as she welcomes the leading experts in health and well-being as they explore the advancements in natural health, physical fitness, nutrition, integrative medicine, and self-discovery. Good day, everyone. I want to thank everyone for tuning in again for another wonderful episode of New Wellness TV with yours truly. But I am honored to have um, the guests that I have today and outstanding and distinguishing both people and renowned known. <laughs> I am just so happy that not only having the guests that I have today, but having a solution to the problem that so many people are facing with autoimmune disorders. So I am so happy that Brother Victor Muhammad, uh, who is going to be uh, sharing so many wonderful uh, in detail to help people to heal. And, and this is, you know, er God has put everything for us to be well. Number one, everything is here for us to be well. So I am just so happy to have Brother Victor and uh, Brother Eric, who has been a dear friend and associate for many, many, many years. I had not seen him. I'm glad I'm seeing you on the screen here today because you left <laughs> you left California. So <laughs> I haven't seen you. But it's such a pleasure to see your face today. And I'm just so thrilled that we all connected for this wonderful show. So without <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And all those happy people knowing they're going to hear some wonderful good news today. So without further ado, you know, today our show is dealing with autoimmune disorders and knowing that immune immune support for the body is the way that we can we can heal. But it's not just just any type of immune support. So what I'm going to do autoimmune disease and uh, autoimmune disease and immune therapies is the answer. So that's the title of our show. And I want people to know that that's what it is. And that's what it is. That's the bottom line. So I want uh, Brother Eric, if you don't mind, tell people a little bit about yourself. And I know you're going to introduce my wonderful distinguished guest today. Well, thank you, first of all, for having us on New Wellness. Dr. Lee, I thoroughly appreciate you being able to uh, have us on the show. Thank you. Now, thank you. Um, we have over the last year and a half been associated with uh, Victor Muhammad. Victor Muhammad is a biomedical uh, scientist. He's an agricultural scientist also, but uh, researcher and engineer. And Brother Victor is one of the world-renowned uh, scientists as it deals with immunology and the understanding of the human body. Yes. I came in contact with Brother Victor a year ago, and we partnered in a business that I'm now distributing the product that we'll talk about later. But the man that you have on your show today is very qualified, over 35 years of experience in biomedical health at the highest level that there is. He did a tenure at John Hopkins, NIH, and at Howard. Uh, he has had, if you go to our website and read his bio is much longer than the program we have right here. So without further ado, I want to introduce to some and um, present to your viewing audience our friend, this humanitarian who of 35 years has put people's health ahead of his own desire to, to gain money. But now we're at a point where we have answers and today's show is coined as autoimmune disease and immunotherapy being answered, uh, being the answer. I want to present to you um, my friend, my brother, somebody I love, and I, I, the man is just amazing, um, Victor Muhammad. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so honored for your being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me, and it is a pleasure to be here. And I hope and pray that I'm able to say something that you and your guests may gain some benefit. Thank you. Yes, I know you will. I, 
I meditate and prayed all night. So every time I have a show, I make sure it's a show to edify the audience, and it always does. God never fails me. So I just want to thank you for being a vessel and God working through you as well to do what you do. I am very honored. So without further ado, I want you to tell me, how did you, first of all, uh, get into doing what you're doing right now? Not so much the product. We're, we're going to talk about that a little, a little later. But as far as your whole quest in medicine and research. Well, to be quite frank, it was by accident or it wasn't my desire. In 1989, I was working as an analyst with the United States Department of Agriculture in Washington, DC. I wrote environmental impact statements and environmental assessments for Congress and the first President Bush on genetically engineered organisms, uh, on uh, the introduction of malathion on plants and animals in the environment, the, inf the effect of uh, malathion on the black howler monkey, spider monkey and other animals and plants in Guatemala and Belize. So I wanted to go to law school in 1989 and combine a JD with my science and research background, do one oil spill case, and then take my money from the oil spill case uh, that I litigate and go to Brazil and live the rest of my life. This was my plan in 1989. Okay. But in 1990, uh, and I'm going to be quick with this, but uh, you'll have to fill in the blanks. But in 1990, I was forced to accept a job at the National Institutes of Health in Washington, D.C. And that job was to use my animal science research background to develop a genetically engineered mice, rats, and rabbits to incorporate genes from the human, human immunodeficiency virus so that we could test drugs and test do experiments on animal models that exhibited the same phenotypical characteristics of, a, of a, an AIDS patient without having to test them on humans. Yeah. That was my introduction to biomedical research. And from there, uh, in 1990, it has escalated 31 years later to what you have today. Autoimmune disorders. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Uh, because in some circles, HIV or the acquired immunodeficiency syndrome is characterized as an autoimmune disease. Yes. So. Uh, that's pretty, pretty deep. I mean, each one of those sections of your life could be a show by itself. Uh, <laughs> I'm telling you, it's almost like, where do we start now? But uh, that was pretty heavy. What I want to do is I want people, because a lot of people are lay people, maybe not truly understand. I just want to break down a little bit of the science of uh, autoimmune disorders. So okay. I know what it means, but I would love for you, my, my guest, uh, Brother Victor, to let our lay people understand what is exactly an autoimmune disease. Well, I'm going to give you a legal response. Not that I'm being facetious, but um, it depends yeah, on it. It depends on the environment where you are at a given time, because if you go into one section of medicine or science, they'll give you a definition. If you go across the hall to another office, but a different shop you'll get a different definition. When I was a patent examiner at this patent and trademark office, there was a cliche around the patent office and it was this. If you ask 20 different patent examiners their opinion on the same invention, you'll get 20 different responses, all of which are true. That's a cliche, but it is a fact. Yes. And so autoimmune, it, there is no standard definition, first of all. So 
I will give you what is a consensus among the scientific and medical community. Thank you. That is any disease that um, any ailment of the body where the body's own immune system turns on itself and begins attacking itself as it would a foreign agent like a bacteria, a protozoa, a virus, or a prion or something like that. So it's when the body's own immune system attacks the body. Yes. Okay. And so with that being said, uh, we're going to start off, if you don't mind, with some of the, the top, maybe the top 10, there's so many conditions. But even though we're going to talk about the top 10 or maybe even more so, <clears throat> some of the conditions that we hear so much of now, because we're seeing so many of them that we never saw before. There's thousands, hundreds of thousands more, and it's all related to, and this is what I'm going to have you to discuss why we have so many in this date and time that we should be having people healed and should not, not, not have all these conditions, but we know there's a big why. So, um, Brother Victor, I would love for you to take it from there and discuss as to why we have so many people diagnosed or some people are never diagnosed. They just have basically all the symptoms and, and mm -hmm. don't want to go and have all the tests because I don't think a lot of the tests can really identify everything that's going on. And then it's those tests, those tests, if you don't have the right insurance, are very expensive. So I would love for you to discuss, you know, the type of uh, conditions that we're seeing that we didn't see years ago. It's so many of them. Well, primarily environment is probably the primary factor involved. Um, 50 years ago, 60 years ago, maybe, America in America experienced what is called the Industrial Revolution, where manufacturing uh, became the boom and people began to work in factories and, and things like that. Then after World War II, we had a, an upsurge in the development of uh, pesticides, herbicides, and chemicals like that. Also in the Western world, particularly America, you have food additives, preservatives, and such. These are chemicals. Yes. And so generally a food additive or preservative is included in the food substance prevent the growth of microflora, microorganisms. And while the body of a bacteria is different than that of a human body, it's still a living organism. And so if something will retard the growth or kill a bacteria, then it will probably retard the growth and kill you and me. Yeah. And so it's not uh, rocket science. As, as a matter of fact, a person with a ninth grade biology education can understand any of this if it is presented to them in a format where uh, the intent is, the, is for the person to understand it. So once you began uh, inhaling a, chemo a, a, a carcinogenic su uh, uh, substance on a daily basis, walking outside your house, getting into an automobile, going downtown Los Angeles, San Francisco, New York City, Washington DC, Atlanta, Chicago, St. Louis, you're inhaling carcinogens all day and every day. And there is a phenomenon in uh, science called bioaccumulation. What bioaccumulation means is that um, it won't be detectable in in two months, it won't kill you in two years. It might not even kill you in five years, but in 20 years of you doing this or being, uh, being uh, introduced to or being affected by a particular substance in the environment over a 40 year period or 30 year period through what is called bioaccumulation, it, it, your body reserves enough of that substance where it becomes deleterious. 
And anytime anything gets into the body and it's able to get inside the nucleus of the cell, if it's able to interfere with the DNA in the cell, then it can cause it can cause the very mechanisms inside that cell to turn on, causing the cell to begin to duplicate itself as normal cells do. But there is a mechanism inside the cell to stop that process of duplication once enough of those cells have been duplicated. But if a pollutant, if a microorganism like a virus if uh, a carcinogen, if something like uh, uh, acetylcholine esterase, which is one of the uh, enzymes found in uh, pesticides that prohibits an animal from being able to breathe, if these things get into the body, into the cell, and interferes with the mechanism inside the cell that turns the cell off from duplicating itself, then that cell continues to duplicate even after it's supposed to be turned off, and then that cell becomes a clump, a lump. You call that lump a tumor. Then once that tumor uh, begins to grow, because that mechanism inside the cell still has not been turned off. So now the lump or the tumor has to have a food supply in order to survive. Yes. Because now it's a living entity inside your body. So it will now go through what is called angiogenesis and develop its own arteries and veins to supply itself with, uh, with oxygen and nutrients. So now it begins to consume everything around it. And so medicine calls that uh, a cancer. So now you have a cancer and you have other types of uh, malfunctions in the body that are called autoimmune diseases where a similar mechanism takes place with the cell where um, the cell loses the ability to recognize self. So if you take a human cell, it's round. On the cells, on the surface of the cell, you have what are called antigens. Antigens are the little markers on the cell that allows the, the cells to identify itself from something foreign in the body, like a virus, a bacteria, a protozoa. And so once something like a chemical comes into the body and interferes with that cell's ability to recognize uh, foreign and domestic, then the T cells, the natural killer cells or the cytotoxic T lymphocyte cells begin to attack because that's what they are designed to do. They attack anything that it doesn't recognize. Okay. And so this is another term or another way of describing autoimmune disease. I love it. I hope this, this helps them to understand. That was very clear. And I like to just say, I have spoke to so many people and have done some seminars here and there. And you know, what really, um, I have to usually give them a scenario when they, we talk about the accumulative effect. And people don't understand that. They're telling me, well, I'm feeling great. I don't have any of these symptoms. I'm feeling great. But that accumulative effect is happening daily. They even yeah. have a note on your car. You're getting your car to drive. But there's a note on your car when you buy them new, unless you pull it off. I did not. And it tell you that the chemicals in your car are carcinogenic. So mm -hmm. even getting into your car, we are inundated. So after a cumulative effect, and I'm so happy, Doc, uh, Reverend I want to say, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Victor, uh, you have to be called doctor, I'm sorry. Uh, but Brother Victor, I want to thank you so much for bringing that out, the cumulative effect. So what I normally tell people, I give them this scenario. I say, close your eyes and see yourself going into a building. What, see yourself walking into this building, but close your eyes and follow me through this journey. And you're, go going, ahead, to, you're going to go up to the 20th floor the 20th floor and you're going to pass, you're going to jump. And after you, as you're passing the 19th floor, the 18th floor, the 17th floor, you're telling people I'm okay so far <laughs> and you are okay so far until you hit rock bo bottom. Yeah. So the cumulative effect is what this is, what I see visual yeah. to visualize it. 
And I, and I tell people all the time, start doing something now. If you start doing something now, if you in childbearing age, you know, you don't transmit this over in utero to the baby. You need to start now. If you're past that age, you still need to start now because you may feel good now, but it's just a matter of time because the cumulative effect is going to, it's building up in our bodies. So I want to thank right. you so much for bringing that up. The um, one thing that I'd like to tell your, share with your listening audience is that um, there are different time frames to describe the phenomenon called moribund. Moribund means that something is dying. Uh, when we, when I was in the laboratory at NIH and other places doing research, and I would transfer Kaposi sarcoma or other, other cancers into the bodies of mice and rats, uh, we would observe them over a time period as they went through the process of being moribund or dying. So you might not die uh, in one week or 24 hours, mm -hmm. but if we do not change our lifestyle, I assure you, I promise you that you are currently dying. Yes. Yes, we are. And we're seeing that um, in younger and younger generations. With all, we have so many labels for things. Now we have with our stage three inflammatory breast cancer that are hitting our young children. We have so many conditions, type one diabetes. I had a young lady in the office the other last week. We're seeing so many of that with our young people, which is autoimmune. And we know the dietary and environmental, all is connected. And you are working with the GMOs um, to know that that contributes to a lot of conditions right now that are happening with people. So I'd like for you to maybe um, go into a little bit more about diet and nutrition as to what is causing a lot of the GMO um, autoimmune disorders. Well, I, um, because my, my credentials are actually in agriculture, mm -hmm. my bachelor's degree, master's degree, and the PhD work that I did were all in agriculture. And many of your GMO products come under the labeling of a commodity, something produced agriculturally. Yes. And a misnomer that I have heard a multitude of times for at least the last 30 years is that some people will say that all GMOs are bad and that's not accurate. Okay. That is not the truth. I've listened to both sides of that debate, that conversation. I've never gotten into a debate myself because if I'm going to discuss something, it will only be with uh, people qualified to hold the discussion. Right. Um, and we have to have a base upon which we begin the discussion, which means that you need to understand something about what you're talking about. Exactly. Not, not when you've gone to and Googled or gone to Wikipedia and read something and now all of a sudden you are an expert. No. Um, GMOs uh, do have some deleterious effects mm -hmm. and GMOs have some uh, have some humanitarian effects. So uh, if you're going to discuss that, it needs to be balanced with the truth. Yes. Um, so are there instances where GMOs do cause uh, harmful effects by those who use them? No question about it. Yes, they do. Uh, and the the information that I would share uh, with your audience is that the best thing to do with your diet is go to go to your go to your um, your roadside markets, and if you can purchase the potato, the apple, the peach. That, that looks the worst, that has the worst physical appearance. 
And chances are you're getting the best one and the, and the one that's the most healthy. When you go to a market, look for the fruits and vegetables that are the ugliest and cost the least. Go to the basket or the, the counter where you can almost get a whole basket of something for $1. That's the one where the least amount of uh, investment has been put into it. That means that pesticides and herbicides are, are very expensive. And when you're growing a thousand acres of something, you've spent a lot of money to produce that thing. And so since, mo since the American population has been trained since World War II to look for the shiny apple, the big peach that has no blemishes on it, uh, the beans that have no brown spots and it's perfect, that's probably a good indication not to eat it because I wouldn't eat it. And when we consume uh, vegetables and fruits like this, then this is where the problem began. Yes. Because there is a thing called LD50, lethal dose half-life, which means that um, this is the amount of time that a thing uh, can kill you up to that particular number of years, even after you are exposed to it. Mm -hmm. And okay. so when you consider that, then consider the term that I gave you a few minutes ago called uh, bioaccumulation. Mm -hmm. These are the situations where, um, one second, please. These are the situations where, uh, where harmful effects do and are. There is no question about it. There is no discussion necessary. Right. Uh, the, the, the fruit and vegetables uh, and the byproducts that we are consuming are actively killing us. And what is a vegetable and what is a fruit? A vegetable is any plant or plant part that is used for food. A fruit is a ripened ovary. So any fruit that's, that you eat is a vegetable by definition. So the question of whether a tomato is a fruit or a vegetable, it's both. Because it's a ripened ovary means if you, it has seeds, you can take the seeds out and plant them and grow more tomatoes. So it's a ripened ovary but it's also a vegetable because you eat it. So those are the definitions so that you can quit debating it. Okay, because deba debates I don't like to get into. You're the expert for the show today, and I have an expert in front of me, Dr. Victor. I'm gonna say Dr. Victor, because that's who you really are. And I have, when you have an expert, and when I bring an expert on the show, I like clarifications because I don't just go out there and Google things and think this is it. I like the experts to come on to give us clear cut advice as to what's happening. And so I thank you for bringing out that distinction, distinction between the two with, with the GMOs. Um, and we know environmental. So because of our topic and because of your background, I want you to give me the information and our listening audience so they know how to move forward in, in helping themselves to heal because of your expertise. I just really thank you. One of the, one of the first things that I would say is um, if you search the literature, go to your local doctor and uh, search the medical journals, you find that, that they are very careful in not describing the source of these so-called autoimmune diseases. Oh, yes. Uh, there is very little discussion about the etymology, the etiology of it. Where did it come from? How did you get it? And uh, how do you treat it? And I don't know if this is intentional and, or I don't know that it, um, it's happen chance. But when you are uh, living in a population of human beings who have the mathematics 
such that you can do the calculations to send a rocket uh, traveling at 10,000 miles per hour through the stratosphere and through space and it reaches the moon. Do you intend to say with a straight face that you can't determine the source of uh, what are you are terming an autoimmune disease? It's not logical and it doesn't stand to what is considered to be reasonable. So we can only uh, conclude that it is known where these diseases are originating, but it may not be politically correct or it might not be uh, economically feasible to identify the source of these diseases. Yeah. So what we would say is that in order to begin to uh, change this, we must begin to, number one, educate the population. That's the primary problem. The population needs to be educated. Educate comes from the Greek word educare, which means to extract from. So we can have more degrees than a thermometer. But if we haven't extracted anything from what we are being told or that to which we are being exposed, then we haven't been educated even with all of our degrees. Exactly. If we were truly educated, then it would be reflected in a society. But uh, you have a society where you've got more people uh, with mental illnesses than any other country on the earth, but yet every other person that you run into is a psychiatrist. So if they were formidable in their training, then wouldn't the number of people who are considered mental ill, wouldn't that number be declining rather than escalating? And the answer is yes. So is, so is it with uh, what, what medical science is now determined to be uh, autoimmune diseases. Uh, Dr. Lee, what we would suggest is that the people began to, uh, we have to begin to educate the people yes. prior to giving them a prescription, prior to giving them a drug, prior to giving them a supplement. We in fact have a supplement that has uh, shown some promise uh, in the last uh, 25, 26 years in our hand, but it was first characterized in 1955 in the literature. So it has a history of more than uh, 60, 70 years in this country. Yes. Um, but um, prior, even prior to that, we believe that the most uh, prudent thing to do is to begin to educate the American population by doing exactly what you're doing right now. This is how you educate people, by bringing them fact. Yeah. The job of a scientist, biologist, and analyst is the same. You research, a, you research a particular subject, you gather the data, you put it in a format where a person with a fourth, fourth grade degree, can under, a fourth grade education can understand it. Then you allow them to make their own judgment calls and their own decisions, you see, because now you've given them everything that they need in order to make an informed decision. But this is one of the key problems that is uh, undergirding what we're calling, calling diseases and autoimmune diseases. The people are not given the requisite knowledge, the requisite information to make an informed decision. Yes. So by you doing what you're doing right now with this show, you are giving the people the requisite information because you cannot give a person knowledge. You can give a person information. Mm -hmm. They take the information, extrapolate it, process it. Then if they can make it and turn it into a utility, meaning something you can do with it, then it becomes knowledge. But if you can't do anything with the information in your head, then it's not, it's not knowledge. It's information. It only becomes knowledge when it has a utility. Yeah. And so um, this is what we would recommend start the process of educating the people, real education, not something on YouTube where you've gotten somebody that, that went to Wikipedia or Google something and now they are the resident expert on it. Mm -hmm. No, no. <laughs> and that's what, I, that's what I try hard not to do. Well, I actually don't because I basically know the background of the people who are coming on like yourself. And I, this, 
will not be your first time, if you don't mind, Dr. Victor. This will not be your first time on the show because you, you have a wealth of information to share. And that's what happens when people will come into the clinic and they said, I wish I had known this. Um, I was basically, you know, somewhat fired from HMO hospitals because, you know, 20 minutes didn't give me enough time to really talk to a patient, to really and let them know what was going on, to tell them about the side effects of the medication. If that's what they, you know, came in for, they need to know everything about it. And that's what a lot of people don't know. They come to me with all these symptoms and problems, and it's related to most cases the side effect of the medication they've been taking and didn't even know that. So it's so important for me to take time, and, and I can't do it in 20 minutes, and that's what I was given when I worked hospitals. So I said, this is not gonna be the place for me. And so this is why I do what I do, uh, and I, I love what I do because I, get, I receive so many calls from people saying, you know, I didn't know this, now I can make an form decision to how I want to be, what I want to do. You need to make a deformed decision if you want to do any type of treatment or take medication, but if you're really ill, you know, there's a time and place for certain things until you get yourself to a level where you're not going to have a massive heart attack. I've mm -hmm. been in two comas myself, so I'm still here, still standing, grandmother of 10, feeling great, and it's about your quality of life, and you want to have the best quality of life as possible. So I love the information that you're bringing forward, and we're going to keep moving on because, like, again, Dr. Victor, you're a wealth of information. Thank you. Uh, to God be the glory. Yes. So we're pausing. I know that your brain is going there. You have a lot more going there. So, No, I didn't hear a question. I'm sorry. Oh, no. I just know. I didn't ask a question. I just want to know. I want to make sure we cover uh, um, what we can. I want to go now into the supplement itself and why this particular supplement and what it's doing for a person for their health. And I also want to let the audience know if you have any questions on our YouTube channel, please submit those questions. I'll make sure that Dr. Victor my, you know, will have a chance to see it. He can see it himself. He's on the YouTube channel and get those questions answered because I don't want you leaving the show and still puzzled about anything that was stated here. I want everything to be clear with you. So if you have a question, please do not hesitate to forward those questions to us. The, the, sup, the first supplement that uh, we are now working uh, with is um, a product, a protein that was first characterized in 1955, 1956 in this country. And it showed great uh, antiviral properties uh, back in the 50s. And the, the name that was assigned to it uh, by the scientists that, 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 that first isolated it indicates that uh, it has antiviral properties. It wasn't until the 70s that a veterinarian in Texas was able to figure out how to use this protein to treat a viral infection in beef calves uh, on, a, on a feedlot in Texas. Then in the late 1980s, a, a Kenyan doctor in Nairobi at the Kenyan Medical Research Institute used this, uh, heard about this veterinarian's work in America. And there were sex workers in Nairobi who had contracted AIDS and they were dying. So what this doctor did, he began to make formulations of this protein where uh, he continued to increase the protein in dosage until he developed an appetite. He was taking it himself. Okay. And once he began to develop an appetite, he suspected that this was the dosage that he should give the, the prostitutes. And so he did and uh, he was recognized all over the world for uh, treating, successfully treating these uh, sex workers in Nairobi with this protein. Now, while I was uh, working, uh, doing research at one of the major research institutions in the Northeast, I got some of the pills that he was using and I tested them. I found inconsistencies in the pills. Okay. And because of a, 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 
a procedure called biomechanics, which it's in the science of pharmaceutics. Me and pharmaceutics is the science that that is used to develop drug delivery mechanisms and techniques. And pharmaceutically speaking, it is almost impossible to get a small concentration of this protein in a pill on a consistent basis, simply from the biomechanics of it. And so what I did in November, 1994, I took that same protein and put it in a liquid form and uh, using some radio labeling of, uh, of uh, uh, radioactive material, we radio labeled the, the protein and put it in the body of some subjects. And we found by taking a audio auto radiograph, meaning a photograph of the human body mm-hmm. using uh, sort of like an X-ray. Okay. We were we were able to see the parts of the body where the receptors for this protein were located, because wherever the receptors were is where the protein entered the body, okay. and it would light up in the in the photograph. And we found that the the receptors are in the nose and in the back of the mouth. So what we did was uh, we suggested to medical doctors that if you use this product, this supplement, it it should be administered intranasally. And from 1994, November to August 2002, uh, eight people whose blood was tested for HIV uh, lab core revo- lab core reported in washington d c that those people's viral load was non detectable oh my god uh, what a they blessing. didn't say that the person was cured i guess for legal reasons yes but they did report that uh viral load colon non detectable and so since that time we have we have had uh clinicians test uh a cadre of other uh, ailments with this particular uh, supplement. And we called it a supplement because it's not a drug. Um, It's not designed to treat anything. It's not a drug. And uh, and so uh, we don't call it a drug and and it doesn't uh, it's not being presented as a drug. It's presented as a supplement, a dietary nutritional supplement. Yes. And we have had doctors use it on lupus, Harris cell leukemia, multiple sclerosis, uh, Crohn's disease, um, uh, breast and cervical cancer, so long as the person wasn't in stage four. Um, And the common cold, herpes, um, um, hepatitis A, B, C, pretty much anything that has to do with a viral infection, we found it to be efficacious and uh, to be effective. Oh my goodness. So the future and the sky is the limit. Wonderful. Have you had, I'm sure you have, with Lyme disease, which is a little bit different. Um, So many people are coming up saying they have been diagnosed with Lyme disease. Have you had any patients or uh, history or testimonies with people with Lyme disease? I have not, but uh, I would only conclude, I would only be able to do a, form an educated guess based on the historical evidence that we've seen for the last 60, 70 years that uh, it would be effective on that as well. Yes. So people who are uh, diagnosed with fibromyalgia and Epstein-Barr virus and cyclomegaloviruses as well. This should be, uh, this should be something that would work well, wonderful for them because it is a for viruses, correct? We believe so. Um, I'm not, I'm not an MD, so I can't diagnose anyone. But uh, based on my 31 years of working in the research and laboratory environment, in uh, in biomedical research, being part of teams where there were clinic, uh, where there were MDs on the, on the research team. And we would sit around in journal club meetings on Thursday morning discussing the research with the pharmacist, the 
MD, the nephrologist, the oncologist, and all of the above, I, 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 I have yet to see a medically diagnosed ailment diagnosed by a medical doctor, which I am not, where it has not been effective. Oh, this is so great to hear because I'm seeing a lot of type one diabetes too in, in yeah. 20 year olds. And um, mm -hmm. we're gonna be talking after the show. And again, this is not gonna be your first time, Dr. Victor uh, Muhammad. I, I pray that you do come back again. Uh, we are counting down to the show here. I mean, we have a few minutes left. I want you to, um, in, a, in three minutes or so, with all the wealth of information you have, I know that's gonna be hard, to give our listening audience, what would you want them to take away from? You know, if they were sitting, you had an audience or, or a client sitting there with you, or you're speaking, what do you want them to take away from this, from this interview today? Well, the, the primary um, piece of advice that I would offer is the American people about 50 years ago began to endure a cataclysmic dumbing down process. The American people have been turned into a, a population of 200 40, 300 million consumers. And we purchase, we buy, re, we react to stimuli. The research done by Dr. Pavlov has been effectively utilized in this society right. to convert the American population to respond to stimuli of, um, of a bell being rung to come and buy something or take something. Yes. If you listen to the language of the average American, no matter what happens to them, they want a pill. It can be a sugar pill, but they want a pill. Yes. And as a result, um, we are suffering and dying. And per capita, the last time I checked, I believe that the American people have more diseases than any other population on the earth. And we're supposed to be foremost in medical science and healthcare, but yet we've got the most obese population on the earth. So things don't come out of a vacuum and everything that you see, there is a cause for it. So what I would like to say to the American people is um, you must begin to educate yourself. Yes. You must begin to contact those who have proven to be able and qualified to give you information that has been verified. Yes. If something doesn't sound logical to you, then it probably means that it's not true and you should not listen to it. You have been trained by Western culture to listen to anyone in a blue suit with a white dress shirt, a necktie, a clean shaven face and speaks uh, with authority. If you want clear examples of this, it's changed a little bit in the last 10 years because everyone has gone uh, you know, business casual. But newscasters, people that did the news 20 years ago, they always had on a suit, they were always clean shaven and they wore a tie. And the purpose for this was to program you to listen and accept what they say without questioning it. So my, my advice would be to, uh, to begin to seek out information so that you can be properly educated. Yes. That would be my advice. Thank you so much. And then you can form your informal consent you know, you have to do those things yourself. And, and this is one reason why a lot of people like listening to the show and because they know that I'm just not going to gravitate on something or somebody has a product. And a lot of, I get calls every day of someone want me to sign up some, with some product. And I tell people all these products and things are not all created equal. You can't go and just take this because some per lay person 
it's telling you with a script that they have been given to tell you what you need to take. And it's heartbreaking when they come to me and say, well, now I have all these other problems and secondary problems and it didn't work. Well, who said it worked in the first place? So this is why I am, I am thrilled to be part of this family. <laughs> and I know you guys have welcomed me in with welcome arms <laughs> to be part of this wonderful family so that we can help to educate more people and not just educate them, but help them to be, have the best quality of life as possible. And to me, that's what's important to me. I've had some of everything from colon, uh, I don't like the C word, so I just say abnormal cells from pulmonary embolism, and you name it, I've had it, and asthma. But you know, my quality of life is good is because I practice, I do what my body, what I also tell other patients they need to do too. Listen to your body, don't just take anything out there, just don't, uh, you can't. I, I tell even with vitamin C, as simple as vitamin C, it was not all created equal. It was not all created equal. And I am so happy to be part of a family of people uh, a team with Dr. Victor and my dear friend, Brother Eric, that's really out here to help people. And I know um, my, my dear person here with the computer who's just look like he is just so happy. <laughs> He's smiling. He's really happy that I know he is going to share with people he knows. So we're going to all share. People, please share this show. If you have any, don't have symptoms feeling great, you know, that's fine and good. I think this is a product that everyone should be on on a daily basis, mainly for prevention. Prevention is the key. And I tell people a lot of time, test and don't guess, but prevention is the key. So if everybody's on a small dose every day, guess what? You're inundated when you walk outside your house, that's gonna happen. You're inundated with toxins inside your house, more so sometimes than outside. So start on it, I think it's something the whole family need to take. That's my belief. That's what I feel in my spirit. I know I will. And I have my grandchildren and children. They will as, as, as well. And I just thank you so much, Dr. Victor, for taking that time, Dr. Victor Muhammad, and my dear friend, um, Eric Muhammad, for being here today. It's been truly, truly a blessing. And I will be calling you after the show and letting people know more about the product. So we will do a, a, a follow-up with the product as well. So thank you so very much for coming on board. And as I always end my show, I end my show saying something that's very dear to me. And you can follow along with me if you like. Um, and so you will repeat after me. And we take this into heart because we all can pull in all the right sources. And this is why I have you on the show today because of what I say. Now, this is what I say. You can repeat after me. I am. I am. I am. So grateful. So grateful, so grateful that I am that I am, that I am a magnet for miracles. A magnet for miracles. And this is why I'm with this wonderful team right here. You know, so each one, take the time to love yourself, love others, take time to give yourself a hug um, because you don't have to wait for anyone else to hug you. So again, everyone, please share the show with your friends and family, even those that you think you don't know, just share it. Uh, share it with everyone because this is very powerful. You want to have the best quality of life and best. Just like the, uh, the Dr. V Victor was stating, you, we are going to die. Something's going to happen. I've lost family members for some of this medication that I thought they should not have been on, especially right. those statin drugs, and I will say it. Um, and I, It was just needless to see uh, a relative of mine go totally downhill from a statin drug. So if we know better, we should do better. If we know better, we should do better. So I want to thank everyone for tuning in today and tune in next thank week. You, thank, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. And Dr. Victor, you will be back again. I know you will. Thank you so much in advance. Thank you for having me and just send me an invite. I will. Everyone have a blessed day. Join us every Wednesday live at 11 a.m. for a new Wellness TV with Dr. Lee. Remember, healthy mind, Healthy body.